So glad that you're with us uh, every day from the shadow of the Freedom Tower. Kevin McCullough, Lower Manhattan, AFA Today on AFR Talk. And uh, we're taking your calls on, um, well, a couple of ways that I feel like we've been put at risk. And, and one is obviously the uh, the trade for the terrorists and the uh, now the likelihood that uh, the, the man that we traded him for is going to come home and go on trial, may get put to death for deserting his uh, unit. Um that's an interesting development. Nobody saw that one coming, I don't think, when they were thinking that they were going to snow the American people on this. Uh, but the other story is a story that's gone largely unreported, and I did just get word from Jody Brown. It's going up on onenewsnow.com as we speak. Uh, you should be able to access it. And it, it will detail for you the, um, the, the very troubling and concerned uh, developments that have uh, been put upon the Border Patrol, the the new, um, I don't know, anxiety that is being put upon them uh, to basically try to defend the border without defending it. Uh, kind of like uh, telling a police officer to walk a beat without a gun, a nightstick, uh, or a can of mace. Uh, that They're saying you can't use your taser, you can't use a gun, uh, and if you get into a, a situation that turns confrontational, you need to seek cover and move back. I kind of view the Border Patrol as kind of like the military. Like they, they, they risk a lot for our safety. And it, it disturbs me to my core to hear them be told, oh, you have to, in a very sissy way, seek cover and move back, when their natural instinct is to step up and protect. Maybe I'm misreading it. That's that's how it reads to me, and it seems, I don't know, very uh, humiliating uh, from a from a mankind viewpoint. Uh, I could be wrong. Eight 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 five eight nine eight eight four zero. I want to know what you think. Triple eight five eight nine eight eight four zero. Let's start with Jack in North Carolina. Hi, Jack. You're on with Kevin McCullough. Glad you're here. Afternoon, Kevin. Thank you. It's good to talk with you, sir. Long time listener, first time caller. Thank you. Yes, yes. I just wanted to comment on a couple of things, really. I was uh, listening to your conversation about uh, Bo Bergdahl. I feel like that's just a total travesty. I feel like that uh, is Taliban 6, American nothing, because for all we know, with what we've been able to determine, and I know the jury's still out, and I don't, I'm glad he's home, but uh, you know, for all we know, he's a he's a collaborator. Uh, and, and, you know, he may yet be tried, and... and uh, uh, and then to hear this uh, new, uh, new, these new restrictions being put on the Border Patrol, it's like, uh, okay, why not? You know, uh, this president, I'm 60 years old. I've raised a family. I, um, I, we had a, a, a child that died as a baby. So we raised four. We had five. Uh, I have never been this concerned for my country. Mm-hmm. I have never been this concerned for my country. This president, I don't believe he's. I don't believe he's ignorant. I don't believe he's stupid. I believe he knows exactly what he's doing. I believe he he's an anti-colonial. He's an anti-capitalist, and he is just trying to push his ideology on the country. And they're buying it. This is the, or they seem to be. I know there's pockets. Uh, I, I hear them. I talk to them. But this is like the emperor's new clothes, and you may have said that yourself. I mean, where is where is the voice? Where is the clarion call that's going to say, "Hey, he's naked, he's naked"? I keep waiting. He, he's he's so lawless. I keep waiting for for the Congress to to bring impeachment uh, proceedings against him. And you say, "Well, they tried that with Clinton, and they were." I understand that. I understand that. But but I'm I'm. When are we going to use the recourse that we have? You know, I'm calling on Congress. I think if there's, a, I think if there's a chance that that happens, it has to happen uh, after something else happens. And let me explain. Uh, this fall, there's a chance for the party that is not the president's to take control of the Senate. The the, the right. big mistake that people made in the Clinton impeachment process is that the House got the conviction, the, mm-hmm. or they they uh, they prosecuted the case. The Senate refused to. Uh, removed from office. And so uh, he was legally impeached, but he kept his office because the Senate uh, refused to uh, exercise the sentencing part of it. Uh, That's what has to happen if you're going to be effective here. And so it makes the Senate races, in particular this fall, uh, come under huge uh, uh, magnification. 
uh, because every Senate seat, every Senate seat that goes into the hands of someone that supports the president, obviously without questioning him, uh, is is extending the damage uh, for our nation into a uh, in, into a further uh, day and age. And I don't want to do that anymore. So I think that people have to get really motivated to see to it that senators get elected who will. Uh, be honest and hold uh, other uh, chambers of the government to accountability. And we have one of those seats in North Carolina, too. Kay Hagan, she needs to go. All right. Well, then, for people like you and for people that you have influence over, uh, make sure that you vote and make sure that she is uh, not uh, not returned. If she's not if she's not fulfilling the will of the people, the best what's in the best interest of the people, then she shouldn't continue to serve as a public servant. These people are our employees, friends. They're nothing special. Uh, they act like they are. Uh, our media kind of treats them like they are, but they're not. They're just us. They're just people like you and me. Uh, and and they, they really shouldn't be treated as special. They should be treated as employees. They should be brought up on review, and when their review stinks, they should be sent home. And that's what should happen in 2014. There should be a lot of people being sent home from Congress this year. Let's talk to Hector in South Carolina, just across the border there. Hi, Hector. Welcome. You're on with Kevin McCullough. Glad you're with us. Well, good day to you, Kevin. Um, i got a few statements. I'll be as quick as I can. Um, okay. Thanks for taking my call. Uh, number one, uh, with Sergeant Birdall, uh, this guy's a traitor. Uh, if I had it my way, I'd just leave him over there. I wouldn't bother with him. Just leave him there. Uh, he needs to be brought to justice, but, uh, you know, it's possible his uh, daddy's Muslim. They're there for the Muslim Brotherhood and all this good stuff. And, uh, you know, punishment is necessary. But uh, this president done this because, um, as I said years ago in 2010, I began saying this, this president has deliberately been running our country in the dirt running it down he's been and, and sneaking al-qaeda in the back door while doing it i mean I, I believe this administration and previous administrations some of them have made deals with muslim brotherhood and uh terrorists and all this stuff and they're trying to with, uh, keep those deals behind closed doors i'm not a conspiracy theorist necessary but uh, i believe that's what's going on they're trying to cover their behinds every which way they go secondly with our borders that's by design. Get it. It's by design that this is going on. Um, government administrations across the board haven't done anything to secure our borders. There's a reason for that. They're friendly to Mexico for a reason. They don't hold the Mexican government accountable for allowing all these defectors to come over here in our country illegally. They should be holding the uh, Mexican government accountable, but they don't. For some reason, they may have some kind of secret pact with Mexico that they're trying to keep, and they're allowing all this to go on. But secondly, as it's been discussed, that's just more uh, votes for Democrats. But this president, get this straight, he doesn't care about our country, he doesn't care about our military. He only cares about his agenda. And if you're not with his agenda, to hell with you, and I don't have time for you. I'll run over whoever and whenever I can. And if that's a Christian, then, uh, you know, there's about a thousand more people on the moon that um, I'll tell you they're Christian, too. But I uh, don't believe anything this president. All right, Hector, I appreciate uh, your uh, passion. Obviously, you got a lot of uh, things to uh, uh, chat about there, and we uh, thank you for your call. Let's go to Jason, also in South Carolina. Hi, Jason. Welcome. You're on with Kevin McCullough. Glad you're here. Hey, thanks for taking my call. I was sure thing. I was you the story, you know. I hear, you know, they're kind of handcuffing the border police. And yet I look at what's happening with the police in America, not all of them, but a lot of them. I mean, just where this baby had a flash bang grenade thrown in the crib. And right. Cops in Seattle are suing because they want the right to use force. How is it that they're allowing the police to be brutal to us, but yet handcuffing the Border Patrol? And these aren't even citizens of our country. It's just shocking. You you have to you have to scratch your head at it because I would think that even the most ego driven maniacal type of personality would still want a degree of safety in which his country is operated so that he can enjoy the uh, ego that he has. Uh, when when I hear things about um, you know not enforcing 
uh, border laws anymore, not, uh, not you know, sending anyone back home. Uh, we're not uh, deporting anybody. And now uh, telling literally the Border Patrol to tuck tail and run when they, when they uh, happen upon uh, people that may be um, more confrontational in their demeanor, do you think that lowers the chance that confrontations are going to happen, or does it increase the chance? I think it increases the chance. And maybe if this administration had not been running guns into Mexico thinking that we would track them uh, and then only end up finding them when they're laying next to dead Border Patrol agent bodies because of shootouts that we got into it uh, with them and, and our people ended up dead and then we found one of the guns from the Fast and Furious operation, uh, it just seems to me that there's, there's a desire to kind of throw the door open and look the other way. I, I I try to be very measured and not and not jump to these conclusions. But I, why do you tell your border patrol to seek cover and get out of harm's way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know about the three wrongful deaths. I know that you spent all of uh, however long looking at twenty five specific cases to come up with this policy when there are thousands upon thousands of interactions that border patrol have with people all the time. I, I know that you looked at twenty five instances out of tens of thousands. And I'm sorry for the wrongful deaths that may have occurred because of mistaken identity or some of the other uh, reasons that, that they may have occurred. But do we really want our Border Patrol to seek cover and move back? 888-589-8840. Let's go to uh, Denzel in Ohio. Hi, Denzel. Welcome. Yes. Glad to be on. First time caller. So glad to have you, sir. What's your thought on this? Well, my thought was just sort of on the overall picture. As I am a believer and a Christian, you know, I feel that we're in end time scenario here. If we read the word and, and, and compare it to what's happening in the Middle East and all over the world, but the biggest problem I've got, we have two party system here, and it doesn't seem like either party. It wants what's best for America. Uh, the Democrats, they kind of put it right in your face, and the Republicans, they kind of sneak around about it and allow it to happen. They've allowed Obama to, whether it be debt limit or whatever it is, uh, to just kind of do what he wants, and not much uh, opposition or not much heard about it on mainstream media. Just like this new bill he uh, passed, or wasn't a bill, he uh, executive order on uh, this Clean Air Act. Well, that's going to kill who knows how many jobs in the coal industry. He's already kind of throttled the uh, fracking industry, and uh, he, he just does one thing after another, and then he'll bring something up else as a smoke screen like this soldier, and we you won't hardly hear anything. But from my understanding that uh, even farmers, there's going to be permits that they have to buy to be able to use water in this uh, act that he just passed uh, or, or made into law. That, uh, you know, if, if it's a $30,000 fine, if you get caught using water uh, uh, after your permit expires or if it doesn't cover it. And uh, there are just so many things that I, I just don't feel the, re the Republicans are standing up enough for the people. I mean, they do at times, but as a whole, I don't feel so. And I feel that I, the people are ready for somebody to stand I up. I agree with you, Denzel. And I, I think as long as you have statists uh, in, their, in their seats... Uh, people that l love the love of power and being in the seat of power more than uh, than actually doing the work of we the people, then you're going to have this problem. And I'm not throwing everybody into that uh, into that idea. I think that there are some of those uh, guys that really do want to change the country. I think that uh, you've got an uh, an upstart class of of under um, underclassmen that are that are ready to step forward. I think the Marco Rubios and the Ted Cruzes and the Rand Pauls are coming up with ideas and so forth. Uh, but it is going to require some strong leadership, and that's what we've been lacking. That's what we've been lacking. We need, we need a non-child president. I'm really sick of the young guys being president. Bill Clinton was young. George Bush was young. Barack Obama's young. Uh, I, I, give me, give me a, a seasoned, steady hand at the helm uh, in the next election. I would, I would really like to have somebody with, uh, more life experience and some understanding of, of what going through a tough time is, because it seems like to me that, uh, kind of, uh, President Bush aside, that when you had Clinton and Obama uh, taking on these different trials, especially with Obama, you just feel like he's, he just never knows anything. You feel like he's constantly like playing catch up. 
And then he kind of says that. Oh, well, I only found out about it because it was on TV. That's the only way. That's the only way he's ever heard of any any story uh, in in all of the scandals of his administration. That's the only way he's ever found out about him is watching television news reports. Uh, let's go to Jack uh, in Texas. Hi, Jack. Welcome. Glad you're with us. Well, thank you for taking my call. I was calling in reference to the uh, referendum, the non discrimination act that was passed in the city of Houston last week, and how. Uh, I, I live in Fort Bend County, right outside of Harris County, and the voters, and, or there's a petition that's going around, need to sign and, and get that petition in. I know that the Greater Houston Pastors Association is involved, and, you know, we've got to take a stand. Jack, is there a website where people can go? Because to most of my audience, this doesn't mean anything. So is there a website we can point them to? What I can do is uh, call you all back and get that to you all. All right, uh, that'd be great. Uh, Joseph in North Carolina, you got the last few seconds here. What's your thought? Hey, are you talking to me, sir? Yes, Joseph in North Carolina. Okay, my thought is this. We have a president that calls himself one thing, but he acts entirely different. The Bible says you'll know a tree by its fruit. And all the, tr- all the fruit that we get off, off, of, off our current president is lies. And, and uh, things he does under the table, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Now, considering this uh, Border Patrol, if you just, you know, all these laws and stuff that they're passing, you don't have to get any new laws. All you need to do is enforce the ones. Enforce the ones have. that are there. I agree with you, Joseph. Uh, good stuff. And thank you for uh, slipping in your call here at the end. I'm Kevin McCullough, the Silver Fox, uh, Brian Fisher himself standing by, and uh, we'll be with you next. Focal point on the way. Uh, Thanks for being with us each day as we obliterate confusion, amplify truth, and pursue clarity. I'm Kevin McCullough. We'll see you next time.